I want to talk to you, like, it feels like th there's a process happening already where everything is shifting eastwards, meaning the BRICs are discussing their own currency. It feels like we're in a, a again, progress or process that we that can't be stopped anymore because the U.S. has printed too much. The money, money, you know, the money supply has been increased to levels that are just astronomical. And the U.S. lost credibility worldwide. And uh, maybe uh, weaponizing the SWIFT system as well has pushed things into into the lap of Russia and China, and uh, their sure. currency, right? And Saudi Arabia to a factor as well. Um, is there? Do you see a, a scenario where the world or the U.S. could step up again to protect the world reserve status and become cr credible again? Is there is there a scenario in your mind? You know, um, <clears throat> I was asked this question at the show, and fortunately there was a paper that had just been published by the International Monetary Fund that made me look at things a little bit differently. You know, one of the things that caught my eye in 2020 and in the height of, of this shift that I was noticing towards the BRICS nations was the International Monetary Fund coincidentally uh, was formulated at Bretton Woods. The International Monetary Fund is somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 and 50 countries from around the world that uh, uh, comprised this International Monetary Fund. It was form formulated at Bretton Woods. In 2020, they came out with a report. It's on their website saying, we want a new Bretton Woods. They want a new dollar system is in essence what they were saying. There was a report that they just published, and I'm going to paraphrase it, the title of it. I'll get it real close. It said something to the extent of, Gold as an international reserve, a barbarous relic, no more. And, you know, if we go back to the majority of my career, when people would talk about the fact that the dollar had uh, overstayed its welcome in terms of its world reserve status, you know, oftentimes you know, people in this industry, myself included, have a bad habit of being very early Kind of like the little boy who cries wolf, remembering at the end of the story, the wolf does come. But uh, people have been talking about the, the demise of the dollar for a very long time. And many of the assumptions centered around something called special drawing rights that would rise up and take the place of the dollar issued by the International Monetary Fund. Uh, all of this conglomerate of these countries all pooling together to make something called a special drawings right. Well, that would just be another fiat currency as well. But it was interesting to me to see the IMF publish this report with the context of gold being no longer a barbarous relic and an international reserve. Now, if we go back to 2019, when gold was reclassified as a high quality liquid asset or a tier one reserve, which gave it um, a, a, a new level of of um, integrity from tier three to tier one, meaning it's a riskless asset. And when you see all of the central banks massively accumulating it, uh, just like we saw here in 2022, where more central banks have accumulated it than in any time in the last 55 years, it becomes very plausible. When I, when I was asked that question, I thought about it and I said, yes, maybe if the IMF, with the US included, issue a special drawing rights pegged to gold and beat the BRICS nations to the punch, that would be the only way that I could see them not losing such a tremendous amount of market share in world reserve. Because quite frankly, what we have is a system right now that is, you know, you look at the US dollar, which is the world reserve currency, makes no sense if you think about it. We are $130 trillion in debt, 31 trillion of it on balance sheet, over 100 off balance sheet, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, government and military pensions. Um, and, you know, I think we've overstayed our welcome and we're insolvent. So when you talk about the fact that the U.S. is the world reserve currency and weaponizing of the dollar, as you mentioned, that was really kind of, I think, the impetus for these countries to speed up the progression of finding a backdoor, finding an alternative. And that is really what we are seeing. And I often ask myself, you know, not only what makes the dollar the world reserve currency, so few people know that it is the protection of the Saudi kingdom. You know, you go back to 1971 when Nixon closed the gold window, it was three years later that, that uh, uh, Henry Kissinger struck a deal with the Saudis and said, we'll protect you, we'll provide you military support, but for that, you'll 
uh, you and OPEC will denominate oil globally in dollars. And it's been that way for 50 years. And you can see this progression that is happening, not just in the fact that we are seeing Saudi Arabia being protected by Russia, joining the BRICS, admitting to, to the world that China is their more most important uh, trading partner in oil this year and for the next 50. But we were just told in Davos that they're open to accepting other currencies for oil. That's all hugely important. But when you see the weaponizing of the dollar as the world reserve currency saying, you can use it, but you can't because I don't like what you did. There is a perception globally, I believe, of hypocrisy that the West can choose who they want and do what they want. And if you're on the wrong side of that equation, well, you're going to be sanctioned. Looking what the European Union did, taking it a step further, the funds that they sanctioned from Russia, they have now confiscated and are using to rebuild the Ukraine. Well, this is a problem if you are the rest of the world, because, you know, part of what makes, you know, the United States so great is the ability to not agree with uh, your government or not agree with everything, have a, a free opinion, free speech. Well, in, in, a, in a global sense, we're kind of hypocritical in that respect, because if you if they don't, if we if countries we don't agree with what the countries are doing, we sanction them. There was a, a French bank a few years ago that was trading with Iran, even though Iran was sanctioned by the West. This French bank decided to do business with them and we sanctioned them to the tune of like four billion dollars or threatened to kick them out of SWIFT. This is the type of bullying that I believe has incentivized the world to find alternatives. And to your point, the weaponizing of the dollar, and I often ask myself, Kai, is this intended or not intended? Now, this gets a little deviation from what you asked me, but I want people to think about it. Our leaders are not dumb. They may be nefarious, but they're not dumb. And you have to ask yourself, if you if you weaponize the dollar and as the, as the controller of the world, world reserve currency and tell someone they can't use it, I don't believe in that. It should be for world opinion, right? And if you do that, what are the consequences, intended or unintended? And I think to not realize this, I think, is naive. You have to understand that this is going to, I think, freak the world out, saying, are we, are we next? And incentivize them to find a back door. So while there is a chance, perhaps, to you know, to rectify this situation, at least in a sense, I think we've also um, lost a good deal of, of faith and, and confidence and trust uh, as, as the arbiter of the World Reserve um, for the way that we have behaved, the actions that we have taken. And when you talk about is it intended or not, you know, you have $130 trillion in debt, right? And um, all of it accumulated, most of it at the lowest interest rates in human history. Most of it will never be able to be paid off so just like calling inflation Putin's fault, which ignores the fact that in the three and a half years that preceding today, the U.S. has printed more money than in the history of the country before it, that's inflation. Inflation is not distortions of the supply chain. That adds to it. Inflation is always a monetary phenomenon. It is an increase of the money supply. That is what we did. It is our fault that inflation happened. It is our fault we mismanaged the currency. Putin's a scapegoat. But if you weaponize the dollar, knowing full well that there will be consequences. Is it intended or not? Is it intended in the respect that we need to find a scapegoat to reset the system? Because, you know, my, my uh, uh, someone who I respect and miss every single day, I guess you call him a mentor of mine, Richard Russell, a decade, 15, 20 years ago, was saying the Fed has no choice but to inflate or die, talking about the mountain of debt that was accumulated back then and now in 2017 we were at 17 trillion here we are at 31 trillion not even counting the unfunded liabilities it's growing exponentially there's no way out without inflation or default so was weaponizing the dollar and incentivizing everyone to move against us an intended maneuver to find a scapegoat it was russia it was xi jinping it was it was it was opec and saudi arabia they did it to us they ruined the american way of life let's rally behind that forget about the fact that the, the federal reserve and the u.s treasury really screwed the pooch through money creation and suppression of interest rates and i, and I just want people to think about that that sometimes things aren't always as they seem and if you are this 
you know, if you're the U.S., you have to realize at some point you've crossed the Rubicon, the point of no return, when you're sitting on 130 trillion in debt with interest rates rising. So pick a villain or fall on the sword. And, and I don't know what the right answer is to that. But Kai, I'll tell you, as the Chinese curse goes, we are living in incredibly interesting times. And I really do believe after being in this industry for over 30 years that there is a fine line between conspiracy and reality. And unfortunately, I feel that this line is a little bit blurred right now as to what the real answer is. So either our politicians are naive or um, or they're di diabolical. I don't know which one it is, but uh, somewhere in between there is probably the truth.